Ronnie McFall joins us again, and this time, Ronnie, the last time you joined me, you are a Port Down manager, and now it's no more. Are you enjoying your, let's say, your retirement? Yeah, I'm good, Aidan, so um, I mean, I've, re I've retired from the management, but uh, I haven't retired for football, you know, that's in my blood, and uh, I hope to stay in, I hope to stay in football in, in, some, in some capacity. Any plans, any thoughts in that direction, or is it just too soon to try and consider that? No, it's too early yet, Aidan, I'll take the the close season out of it and then I'll, I'll see what develops after that. Portadown, a bit of free fall, not even just when you were there, but free fall since it Pat McGibbons in. You'd be disappointed to see such a proud club like Portadown struggling a wee bit. Yeah, it's disappointing to see them struggling. Had a disappointing season this year, no question about it. There's a lot of a lot of factors in that, you know, a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes on, on, on whatever, which I, won't, which I won't go into, which didn't uh, which didn't make it a good atmosphere for you know for players to play and, and, and everything else. Are you angry at the exit of Portadown, upset, annoyed? What are your actual feelings? No, I, I'm just glad I'm Aidan just glad I'm out. I mean my my time was up and I've I have no, no no regrets. I don't do I don't do regrets. I mean it was a difficult season which which happens in football. And you just have to put it behind you and move on and uh, wish Portadown all the best in the future. Pat McGibbon is now the new manager, along with uh, the, the legend uh, Vinnie Arkins. Uh, they've had a difficult enough end of season. Do you think they can do better next year? Yeah, I have no doubt. It. And I mean, one of the big problems I had this year was that I, I wasn't able to sign any players, and that was a big problem because you need to refresh the squad ev every year, no matter what sport you play in. So you did, and we weren't able to do that. And we had up a, picked up a few injuries or whatever. So at least. Uh, He's in the in the position now where he can go and sign players and bring his own players in or whatever. And said, I wish him and Vinny all the best. You talk as a manager how you have to freshen things up. So therefore, I would think you're probably full of admiration for the likes of Stephen Baxter, who retained the Premiership. Now that is, you know, a good team can win a league, but to retain it is very special, Ronnie. As I said, I mean, Stephen's done a fantastic job at, at Crusaders, considering you know when he went in at the start. And again, he's done the he's done the right thing. He's already made a couple of signs, as we said at the minute, and I know he's a couple of irons in the fire as well. And uh, they'll they'll certainly be in, in my mind be favourites again next year. I would expect Linfield to make a strong challenge next year as well, and I can't see it basically been outside of those two. Interesting, the fact that there was a lot of interest at the top, but really in the end. The drama came at the bottom of the table. Poured down, almost sucked into a relegation battle. Warren Point relegated after that decision, that late decision to give Nungan and Swift a penalty. Your reaction to that? Well, first and foremost, he had made experience of Ross and Lappin last in last year's Irish Cup final, and the decisions he made cost us the Irish Cup. I have no no questions about that. And uh, again, the decision he made on Saturday was absolutely shocking. And I mean, I have to question, you know, the, the appointment of the referees in Saturday, because all the pressure and everything at stake was on the bottom six teams, and yet you had the top referees referee in the top six teams, which was nothing at stake. But again, I mean, it'll, it'll never change. It's a difficult job. Everybody accepts that. But I mean, it's a self-governing organisation, uh, responsible to no one and paid for by others. So until that changes, unless that changes, nothing will change. I was disappointed for Warren Point because uh, I felt they'd been an addition to the league. You know, they've worked very hard. You know, Barry Gray's done well. Uh, I don't think I've seen uh, Harry Fay, who's normally mild mannered. I don't think I've seen. I don't think I've ever seen him as, as animated or upset and annoyed as he was at the end of that game. Well, I mean, you see, the, the, the people don't realise it and what's at stake and what pressure managers are under and clubs are under as well. You know, to stay up. I mean, Warren Point have, have worked really hard to get into the Premier Division and get their ground up to scratch and whatever. And I know that big plans for the future as regards, you know, ground development. And now all of a sudden, because of one ma major mistake, they're back in the Championship again, which puts the whole, the whole future of the club at stake. And that, that, that's, that's, that's what's at, at, at stake in, the, in these situations. Leicester went on a great run near the end of it. And now Claudio Ranieri has produced the Premiership title running. A lot of people, pundits and TV people are saying it's the greatest sporting achievement, let's say, in British sport. How far would you rate it? Well, it's certainly up there, yet. there's absolutely no question about it. I mean, they finished 
they just survived in the Premiership last year, and they go from that situation to being Premier League champions. You know, with the money that the rest of Manchester United and Chelsea's and City and all have, absolutely unbelievable. I mean, uh, I watched the game last night between Ben Munich and Atletico Madrid, and if if you look at it, Madrid and uh, and Leicester, they play a similar type, two solid banks of four, front two drop in, make it difficult to beat, and then they've got pace to hit teams and teams on the break, and that's a similar. Leicester similar to way Madrid If you read something about Leicester they tend to give you the impression that it's almost going back to the old days of football where he got together a, a good set of players, he thought he had good players from last year, didn't change too much made them feel good and said right lads, let's work, let's enjoy ourselves here, no egos, let's enjoy ourselves and play football and it worked. Yeah well a lot of those a lot of those players you didn't you said came into Leicester with no with no egos. A lot of them came from you know from lesser sides. I mean Jimmy Vardy came from a conference, right? Uh Mares came came from a second division in, in France. So them those guys came with, with no egos. Uh Drinkwater got released by Manchester United, so they knew what it was like to the struggle to, to try and make it to the top and that obviously spurred them on and obviously it was tremendous team spurt and uh in the changing rooms or whatever, and Ranieri, all credit them, handled the situation brilliantly, right, right from day one. Hey, as a manager, were you impressed the way he handled it? You know, he he was very, very amenable to the media. He didn't get too excited. He played it low key, and it was only near the, the you know near the very end when he said, "Yes, I think we can go and win this." Yeah, well, I mean, his first target was to get the forty points, and he took all the pressure off the players right away. And then after that, it was time to get into Europe, and he put no pressure on the players whatsoever. And I think that showed in the way the players played with the smile on their face and everything else. And, and all credit them. Ronnie, Irish Cup final. Uh, Linfield versus Glenavon. You'll know all about them. You know what it's like to play in a cup final. You know what it's like to win a, a cup final. You know what it's like to lose a cup final. The pressure ahead of the big game, the National Stadium at Windsor Park, it'll be there for both sets of players. I think so, Ed, and I think really there's more pressure on Linfield than what there is in Glenavon. I mean, Gary Hamilton's done a fantastic job there, and they've already qualified for Europe, which is a big, a big thing for a provincial team. Uh, Linfield haven't won a major trophy for a few years now, so I think there's more pressure on David, to, even though there are in Europe, uh, to pick up that uh, Gibson Cup come, uh, come Saturday. David Healy has done well actually after taking over, you know, in midstream, let's say, so to speak, in his first top managerial post. He's He's done his best could be expected, I think. Yeah, I think so. And it's not the, it's not easy coming in sort of halfway through a season because you you haven't really haven't really made any any signs as such. You're dealing with all with all the previous manager's players. I mean, he signed Ross Gaynor, who's been a big a big signing for him, and uh, the young lad Smith has come through as well, which is a big plus too. And he's got Waterworth's pace up front, which is which is a big asset. When you look at Glen Abbott, now you mentioned. Uh, Gary Hamilton, and I think it's fair to say Gary accepted too when he was selected. Some people went, "Oof, is he going to be a good manager?" He certainly has proved his worth. Hasn't he, young? Well, he was always very knowledgeable in about the football. I mean, when I managed him, he was always very knowledgeable about the football. I felt with the ability he had, he should have been playing at a far higher level in Irish league. And he's carried, that knowledge he's carried that on into management, and, and he's done really exceptionally well. Now you think Liverpool are under pressure, they're in the new National Stadium which is fantastic, going to be a great arena for the cup final this year, but who would you fancy? I think Eden is very close to call, so I did. I think Glenavon could depend an awful lot if Kevin Braniff turns up. I mean he's really, he's an all really gifted fellow that I managed as well. And again if he turns up then I, I think Glenavon could just see it. And Ronnie, would Sometimes when people, you know, remove themselves from the sport or are removed from the sport, they tend to walk away at the next time. Would you go to the cup final or you, would you prefer to sit at home and just watch it all on television and watch it in full? Well, I mean, you go to these occasions, occasions as you know yourself, because of the atmosphere that's, that's generated and certainly it'll be, a big, it'll be a big crowd on Saturday. And the atmosphere, as I say, you don't get that at home watching it on the television. So, as I said, I've been keeping myself busy going to different games and I'll certainly be there on Saturday. Well, Ronnie, listen, we're delighted to get talking to you. I know that you've semi-retired, let's put it that way, and no doubt we'll have you back in football again. We'll be delighted to see that, Ronnie. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you.